Hello everyone and welcome yourselves back to the channel, back for another video, back for another movie review. Today, Django Unchained, and I watched this for the first time ever two weeks ago, and holy shit, was it a good film. Like, yeah, I've seen, you know, films I have regarded as the greatest ever, you know, Schindler's List, you yeah. Untouchable Titanics in 1917. You know, that's that's just some. Uh, but I sit here now to, about to talk about Django Unchained and hold if you haven't seen it, I, I I um I suggest you do watch it because it's just brilliant. And I'm gonna explain why in a minute. But subscribe if you haven't, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and you agree with my thoughts, or if you don't, obviously, just leave a comment and um Tell me if you disagree, tell me if you agree, expand in the comments, and just overall, let me know what you thought. Enjoy the video, and let's delve into the review. So, Django and Shade is basically a film that has got like a Western vibe. It's during the slave trade. Uh, it involves um, Christopher Waltz, who is a bounty hunter who needs to locate three brothers who he doesn't know he doesn't know what they look like but he knows the name so he must recruit a slave who Jamie Foxx plays in order to kill them or you know find them and get the bounty and this is how the film opens and then it's just basically this quest of you know giving Jamie Foxx's character this freedom of, you know, riding horses that people can't seem to understand why this is happening. The N-word gets thrown around a lot. You get to see this relationship form all the way through the film. And then you get to see Jamie Foxx sort of confront the idea of telling Christopher Waltz that his wife was separated and was bought at the auction by someone else, but not knowing who it was. You get to see flashbacks of their relationship, the abuse... Uh, the racism that goes on in this film, obviously justifiable in the time period. That's what, you know, that's what it's portraying. But you get to see like Christopher Waltz's character break the boundaries and be like, I don't see colour. I'm not racist. Um, I'm on a mission just to do what I need to, to get money. And overall, it goes on this journey of basically killing the brothers, which is such a rewarding part of the film because you go through confrontations, you go through the intelligence, Crystal Waltz's character of getting them out of situations that otherwise they'd just be slaughtered and killed and shot and hung and all these other things. Uh, especially the scene where they walk through the town, they go into the bar and then there's like 50 guns on them and then he weasels in his way out by saying this person has a bounty on them. It's the intelligence at every fine detail you get to see that Quentin Tarantino includes in this film. Um, it's a slow film, but in the sense of it's a slow, well-paced payoff film because, like I said, you get to see the three brothers die and you get to see, you know, from the flashbacks, Jamie Foxx is abused and his wife is abused with the whip by these brothers and then you get to see him whip back and shoot them and then have a bit of banter with Waltz's character with the third brother when he's on the horse and it's just funny to see how he goes from this raggedy down of the world slave to someone who gets like a clean court clean uniform he's high on life because he's being respected better and he's not being a uh, racially slurred every two seconds by Waltz, but he is racially slurred by everyone else. He's sort of seen as like king of the slaves um, as the film goes on, but you know, you progress. Leo's character comes into it, Samuel Jackson's character comes into it. You get to see the wife of Jamie Foxx's character. You get to see brilliant acting from four just remarkable actors Leonardo DiCaprio who comes in the back half of the film who's the person who bought Jamie Foxx's wife at the auction a rich man who lives at Candyland you have Samuel Jackson who plays a a slave for Leo but again he's seen as like a a friend to Leo and it's sort of funny because Waltz is traveling with Fox Leo's with Sam Jackson and it's funny how they have this same dynamic 
but for different reasons and different you know understandings. Jackson brings the humor and brilliance and as always fantastic acted. Leo to being the villain, but to being intelligent and smart. And obviously he was manipulated, but when he found out the truth, became a psychopath. You know, the scene where he's killed by Christopher Waltz, and again, the brilliance of Christopher Waltz going for that handshake and the quick draw into the into the heart was just fantastic. But then what I loved is Quiz Tarantino didn't shy away from killing Christopher Waltz off. You know, it was the biggest jaw-dropping moment for the of the film from me. Because it's in slow motion. I thought Jamie Foxx was going to kick the guy out of the way. But it's like, bam! Waltz is dead. He's just shot straight through the stomach. He's dead. So Leo and Christopher Waltz are killed within seconds. You know, the whole house fight with Jamie Foxx killing off one, two, three, four. But then he gets outnumbered. And it goes to this thing of he's he's hung. He's back to a slave. His wife is left at Candyland. You have the guy from Fallout. And many other projects who's become sort of the main villain. Um, Sam Jackson's character is still there. And it just overall, it's a fantastic, fantastic film because you think, ah, oh, you know, Leo's dead, Waltz is dead, Fox has been recaptured, Jackson is just roaming around the house doing whatever he's doing. And then Fox gets freed again, rearms himself, and just saves his wife, blows the building up, and it was just phenomenal. Like, I thought the ending was like, <clears throat> oh, why are they doing this? Why have they just restarted things? How's he going to get out of this? Is he going to save his wife? Is it going to be a happy ending? And holy shit, it was brilliant. Get a little cameo from Quentin Tarantino. Uh, I just thought, I just thought it was brilliant. Uh, the, the, the pacing, the relationship, the deaths were gory and amazing. Uh, it was funny. Uh, as I said, the four main actors were fantastic, even the co-actors. To see it be violent and bloody and gory. Um, as I said, there was a good start. There was a good middle. There was a good end. Um, everything made sense. There was never a moment, like I said, for Lord of the Rings, where you thought it was boring. At the end, originally, I was like, oh, okay, it's going on for a bit too long. But then when you get to the end and he does what he does, it's like, holy shit, what an ending. Him and his wife just riding off to the distance on the horses and the house has just been blown up by TNT. It was fire. It was fantastic. It was truly cinema. Quentin Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino did a phenomenal job of giving these four people a screen time, you know, just... He truly is one of the greatest directors in history. And I'm going to be watching more of his stuff soon, like Inglorious Bastards and uh, Kill Bill and whatnot. But yeah, it, uh, it's a 10 out of 10 perfect film. The, um, the, yeah, props, sets, characters, score, the, the Django music that opened up. It was brilliant. It was absolutely fantastic. I can't believe it's taken me this long to watch Django Unchained, but if you haven't seen it, and you want to watch it. Yes, I mean, this is my reviews will always be spoiler filled because I'm here to talk about these. I mean, I'm here to talk about them. And these are films that have been out for years. So if you feel like it's been spoiled, it's like, well, that's that's that's, that's a you issue. Let me know down below what you thought. Who you who do you think was the best actor of the four? My opinion it was Christopher Waltz. Christopher Waltz carried this film on his back, but that's nothing against the other three because the other three brought different things. Jamie Fox brought sass. Leo brought the psycho and Fox. Uh, Jackson brought the comedy. Waltz brought everything. He is a tremendous, tremendous actor who, rightly so, I think, won an Oscar uh, for this role. So, wow, wow, wow. Go check it out for yourself. Hit that subscribe button and await more reviews coming your way very soon. Thanks for watching, as always, and take care.